Hello everyone, Professor Toybox here along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back in my Fantasia Toy Box for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Last time we looked at four basic creativa toys for capturing user input, the button, the target, the trigger, and the power switch. And I built a little door puzzle over here in Merlin's castle that requires a character on the outside of the castle to shoot this hidden target in order to open the door. And you may have wondered, as Amar Carlos did on YouTube, about characters who can't shoot and how they would be able to open the door if it's locked. Well, you have a few options for that. First, you could always switch characters. <clears throat> that may seem obvious, but it is a way around the problem. Of course, if you really want to play as a particular character, then you won't want to switch them out every time you need to shoot something. Second, if you have a power disc, like Stitch's Blaster, you could put that down on the Disney Infinity base, and then every character in the game has that weapon available to use to shoot the target. Of course, if you don't own one of those power discs, then that won't help you. Or maybe you do own one, but you don't want to use it because it doesn't fit the theme for your toy box. There's a third option, and that's the one I want to explore today. You can use the object generator to provide the pack or tool that you need. And you'll find that in the Creativa Toys drawer, of course. And you can use that to provide a shooting weapon or a pack that allows a character to climb or jump high or fly. And so I'm going to put this down over here in the starting castle. And that will make this available to every player right at the start of the toy box. And I'll put that right here. And we'll look at the properties for this. So we'll open the logic menu and look at the properties, and there's only two of them. The first one, when you turn this on, will auto-spawn a pickup every 10 seconds right now, unless I change the 10 to something else. But you have no control over what comes up, so whatever is put here is random. And so I usually don't like to use that um, in order to specify what specifically you'd like, you need to use a logic connection. And so we can come into the Creativa Toys drawer and drop a button, for example, and hook the button up to the object generator so that when you push the button, it'll generate a specific item. However, if you're like me and you kind of want to keep everything the same with the theme, um, the button and the object generator there look a little futuristic, so I don't really want to use that. But I can hook that up to the gate. We noticed in an earlier video that the logic menu is available for the Dunbrock gate. And if we open that up, we can specify a new logic connection so that when the gate is open, we can connect that to the object generator. And we can generate all kinds of different things. We can generate a pack, which is short for a backpack. And there's a whole list of them here that you can select from. Again, these are anything that you can use to climb or jump high or fly. There's a few weapons in there as well. Or you can select a tool, and most of these are weapons. And there's a whole big long list of these as well. And there's a random option at the bottom of each of these lists, so you can have it generate just a random tool or just a random pack. The random option out here will select any one of these things randomly. There's a couple of items that you can also generate, namely a health capsule or a special move capsule. And there's an option down here at the bottom called Remove All, and this will remove any object that's been generated unless it's already been picked up by a player. And so I'm going to generate a shooting toy, and I'm going to select the Blunderbuss. That's a pirate pistol. And so now when we come outside the gate, and we run through the gate. Not only do those braziers light up, but we have a object generated, which we can then pick up. And now we have a toy that we can shoot with. So that's a good thing. But as I said, this object generator looks a little bit too futuristic for me. And so it'd be nice if we could somehow hide that or theme it. But as you'll note, the X uh, option here for theming it on the Wii U is not available. So 
What we could do though is connect a locator to this. And I'm going to drop a locator right here. And we can come back over to the object generator and specify a new locator connection. <laughs> there comes the dragon. And if we select that, then that's our generation location. And so now, the object, when we come through the gate, is generated over at the locator instead of on the object generator itself. What this means is that we can then take this and move it below the terrain if we want and hide it so that it's out of the way. And I'm actually going to leave it up here for now just because I'm not quite done with this yet. Um, you may be wondering if we could take uh, the power disc that we had, like Stitch's blaster, and put that down and use the object generator to generate that. And the answer to that would be no. So if I come over here, for example, and edit this connection so that when the gate is opened, you'll note unlike some other toys, uh, there's no option here for the hexagonal power disks. So you can't use the object generator to generate an object from a power disk. And that's kind of a shame. One more thing you can do with this object generator, if you come into the logic menu, you'll note you can specify a new logic connection. And there's two trigger signals that this will broadcast. One is when an item is generated, and the other is when the item is actually picked up by a player. And so you can use this, for example, to hook up the item collected signal to a sound generator to play a sound when a player picks up the item, or you could connect that to an enemy generator to, con to generate an enemy, or a falling object generator to generate a rock that'll fall on top of the player when they pick this up, and set up a booby trap for that. There's all kinds of different things you can do with these two trigger signals, so it's kind of handy to know that those exist. So that's how you can use the object generator to provide a particular pack or tool for your toy box players. Next time, we're going to look at enemies and finally add some brooms for Mickey to deal with. So for now, go ahead and subscribe to my channel or sign up on my blog so you don't miss a single episode in this series. And if you found today's episode helpful, please give it a like. I would greatly appreciate that. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.